Good day. This is the fourth part of a short video series for Twitter, where I share some of my memories as a member of the African National Congress and of Mpomtu Wisizwe over the past 41 years. Today, I want to remember two comrades that I've been close to, Comrade Vincent, Toibu Shabalala, and Father Timothy Stanton. Both of them are late now, but they continue to inspire me and many other NC comrades who had known them. Father Timothy and Vincent came from different social backgrounds and different ages, but they shared an ardent commitment in the full liberation of our beloved country. When I first met Comrade Vincent, he was the leader of COSAS in Alexandra, a young man with obvious leadership abilities and someone whom I believe would have grown into one of our great leaders in a democratic South Africa had he not been killed so tragically at a young age. In 1983, Comrade Vincent and some of the other young student leaders in Alexandra were under constant surveillance and harassment by the security police. It was evident that it was just a question of time before they would be arrested. In consultation with the leadership of the African National Congress, it was agreed that some of these comrades had to go into exile. Four were identified. And I arranged with Comrade Vincent, Comrade de Poum Falasi, Comrade de Poum Letsatsi Duba, and one other comrade whose name I think it is not appropriate to mention at this stage, in this video, that they would come to my house in the rear. And from there we would move to the safe haven of St. Peter's Priory in Rosetta. The reason why St. Peter's Priory was such a safe place to take them and for them to stay until they could leave across the border to Botswana was because of the presence there of the Vice Principal, Father Timothy. I've learned from previous experiences working with Father Timothy in the underground that I could trust my life to. And I was therefore happy to entrust the lives of these young people in his capable, comradely hands. On the day that we arranged for the four comrades to come to my house, only three of them arrived. We were stood up by the fourth comrade. Obviously, this led to a lot of anxiety and uncertainty. In the underground work that we were doing, such behaviour was entirely unacceptable and raised all kinds of serious concerns and questions. Nonetheless, we moved on to St. Peter's Priory, and for the next week, the three remaining comrades stayed there. They were safe under the careful control and eye of Father Timothy. I visited them often and got to know them better, especially Comrade Vincent, whom I learned loved to read, and had a great thirst for knowledge. Soon after we arrived at the Priory, he made the library almost his home. Every time you looked for him, you could find him sitting behind a pile of books reading. One night when I looked for him again and found him in the library, there was a Bible open in front of him and he was very excited. On the first page, written in very neat handwriting, was the name of the President of the African National Congress, Comrade Oliver Reginald Tambo, and his birth date. It turned out that this was the personal Bible of Comrade O.R., which he used for Bible study and contemplation when he was, at a young age, a teacher at St. Peter's Priory. We went through the Bible, looked at the texts that were underlined, and what Comrade O.R. had written in the margins, how he linked some of his personal and political experiences to the biblical messages. This was clearly the Bible of someone who was a deeply committed Christian. With the wide-eyed excitement of a young man, Comrade Vincent asked me if he could keep the Bible. 
I told him that I had to ask Father Timothy if this was possible. When I told Timothy about Vincent's excitement, he immediately agreed with one precondition, that when Vincent eventually meets the president of the African National Congress in exile, he would return the Bible to its original owner. To this, Vincent happily agreed. I have one more touching and painful memory of that time when Vincent and the two comrades de Poole were at St. Peter's Priory. The night before we had to cross the border to Botswana, Vincent asked me to take him to a public telephone because he wanted to make one last call to his mother. I was uncomfortable about this because it was a breach of security. Any calls could possibly be traced and reveal their whereabouts. But I also knew that Vincent dearly loved his mum, who, in a single parent family, took care of him at great personal cost and hard work. So we went to that public telephone. I stood away at a safe distance so that I could not hear what he was saying. And after a few minutes, he put the phone down and in deep contemplation came back to me. When we went back to St. Peter's Priory, he kept silent. I could see that this was one of the most difficult things that Vincent had to do to say goodbye to his mum and leave his family behind. The next day we crossed the border to Botswana. I did not see Comrade Vincent ever again. A number of months later, I and my then fiancé Yancy Lawrence were detained at that house in Berea by the security police. We were kept in solitary confinement, interrogated and tortured, eventually charged with high treason, found guilty, and Yancy was sentenced to a four-year sentence and I was given a 15-year sentence. In the period that we were detained, Father Timothy Stanton was detained with us. The security police demanded from him that he should give evidence in our trial. He refused. With absolute commitment and integrity, he refused in court and explained why he as a Christian and someone who believed that apartheid was a crime against humanity could never give evidence against his comrades. The judge sentenced him to six months of imprisonment and Timothy, who was already at an advanced age, served every day of that sentence. A year and a half later, when I was in prison in the Pretoria Security Prison serving my sentence, I received a message from some comrades who managed to smuggle in some information to us in prison that Comrade Vincent had gone from Botswana to Angola and from there to the Soviet Union, where he got specialized training as a member of Uncomptu Wissiswe. He then returned to South Africa on a special operation. And in Alexandra, two blocks away from the home where his mum lived, Comrade Vincent was led into an ambush by the security police and South African Defence Force. He bravely fought back. And in the exchanges of fire that happened there on that fateful day, he eventually died in a hail of bullets. Many years later, after I was released from prison, I learned that Comrade Vincent met with that other comrade who stood us up when he was supposed to join the group to leave the country and go into exile shortly before he was killed. I do not know what transpired between Comrade Vincent and that comrade. 
I hope he got the answers that he always wanted. I hope that he was able to get clarity about why that comrade left him behind and didn't come into exile. But there continues to be the needling uncertainty, the questions about how shortly after that meeting happened, Comrade Vincent was attacked by the security police and the South African Defence Force. In this video, I do not think I should talk more about but at a later stage, especially in the book that I'm busy writing with the title Beyond the Pale, I will revisit these issues where I've got more space and more ability to contemplate about these difficult memories and challenges that continue to live also in our experiences of today. When I think about all of this, I know that the challenges that we face in South Africa, the challenges to bring about a truly liberated and democratic South Africa, will continue to haunt us until we live with commitment and with dedication out the commitment and dedication that a young man with the name of Vincent Toivo, Toivo was part of the name that he took for himself in honor and in recognition of the great revolutionary leader of Namibia, Comrade Toivo Yatoivo, lives out in his life. We are still faced in South Africa by betrayal. We are still faced in this country of ours by people who use the words of liberation, who literally cover themselves in the flag of the African National Congress, but to live a life of sellout and doubleness. Those are the challenges we have to continue to face. Those are the challenges that the life of Comrade Vincent and the manner in which he died continues to confront me and it should confront each one of you on a daily basis. I greet you with the promise that I'll come back next week another